Remember the word of the Lord to us this month is, I'm redeemed a wonder to my world. Next level connotes progress. Next level connotes, in our context, positive change of story or scaling new heights. Wherever you are now will be the least place you will ever be. You will scale new heights. You will enjoy positive change of story. You will enjoy progress, progress in successions in the name of Jesus Christ. Kindly come with me to Isaiah 43 verse 18. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. I take my text from there. Remember ye you not know, the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Say, do it, Lord. Remember ye not the former things, which means in life there are former things, there are present things, and there are future things. You don't waste your today thinking of the things, especially the irreparable past, because they are past. Those who refuse to allow the past to be past, pass away with the past. You cannot change yesterday, but you have something to do today that can help you get a better tomorrow. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Why? Say, behold, look, see, observe, understand. I will do a new thing. It is the new thing God does that makes us to have good news. It's a new thing that God does that makes one to become a news to his world. God will do a new thing that will make you to experience a better tomorrow. Say, shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, which means I can make the impossible possible for you. Because with men it may be impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things, including your next level, is possible with him. Impossibilities will be made possible in your life from now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please stop looking backwards. Start looking forward. <laughs> I strongly believe that God put our eyes in front so that we can always look forward. If you wanted you to be looking backward, you will put two eyes, it will be one at the back or two eyes at the back. But He wants you to look forward. Be progressive, both in your mentality and in your actions. If you see any driver that is driving you, maybe it's moving from here to Pretoria and then it's looking backward, <laughs> won't you come down? Because that's an accident going to happen. The same way, anytime you concentrate looking backward, you will, can only see shadows, you can't see the light. Those who look down, for instance, they only see shadows. Those who look up, see the light. Say with me, I will look up. And when you look up, you go up. Hallelujah. You will go up in Jesus' mighty name. So I don't know who I'm speaking to this morning. Stop weeping. Stop crying. Remember, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love him. So what is ahead of you is greater than what is behind you. Your tomorrow is greater than your yesterday. Stop weeping. I cause therefore this morning every root of despondency, discouragement, disappointment, depression of any kind. Say, 
Somebody is here, you will not experience sleep deeds again in Jesus' mighty name. No deal will slip out of your hand. No good thing will slip out of your hand. No more near success syndrome in the name of Jesus. Yes, you may have been mistreated. You may have been misused. You may have been abused. You may have been let down. But that is not enough to kill your life, to kill yourself. No one drowns by, stake, by, by standing up from the water. You will drown by remaining in the water. You have compared this mountain long enough. It's time to move forward. Yeah. Say with me, I'll move forward. God saw them. Pharaoh behind them. Red sea before them. In Exodus chapter 14, 13 to 15. Was he a wicked God? No. <laughs> because he will always make a way where there is no way. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper. Light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. He has not changed. He's still a way maker. Racy before them. Pharaoh pursuing after them. He said, why are you crying after me? Tell the children of Israel that they move forward. Not move backward. Move forward. He's a progressive God. In this kingdom, the path of the just is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter. Your tomorrow will be all right. Amen. Your tomorrow is better than what you are going through now. Amen. So don't kill yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, it doesn't matter what life has thrown at you. It doesn't matter how things have been. The truth is that surely there is an end. Proverbs 23 verse 18. And the expectation shall not be cut off. That's the good news I have for you. That negative thing will not continue. That shame will not continue. That moving around the circle will not continue. It's time to move not world. It's time to move up. You will move up in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear me this year. 2024 shall end so well for you. Between now and December 31st, many things will happen in your life that will make you a news to your world. Yeah. Some of you may not have passport as I speak now. You may not even have uh, document visas, but before the end of the year, you will travel to different nations. Yeah. Doors will open to you that cannot be shut. Yeah. Now hear me, I don't know how the year began for you, but the year will end well for you. Yeah. That is one thing I know. Amen. <laughs> you know, Proverbs, uh, Job 8 verse 7. He says, even though your beginning will be small, your later end shall greatly what? Increase. So what will happen from now? Increase on every side. Breaking forth to the left, to the right, to this. New level on every side. Have you not heard that God crowned the year with his goodness? And his power drop abundance. Psalm 65 verse 11. God will crown this year for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. But what is God's principal instrument for positive change of story or for next levels? It is his word. Word encounters will always provoke next level blessing, next level lifting, next level increases. If God said he will give you next level, it means that <laughs> what you are, where you are now is not your end. It's next level banquet service. A banquet is take as much as you want. Increase will answer to you. I pray that by the word of God you'll be hearing today that God will establish your next level breakthrough. Amen. Your next level answer. Amen. Your next level in your head. Amen. In your family. Amen. In your business. Amen. In your career. Amen. In your finances. Amen. In your relationship. Amen. Next level for your children. Amen. Next level for every area of your life. Amen. Somebody is getting a next level mentality. <laughs> <laughs> so God's word is God's principal instrument for provoking triggering next level blessing. Now a man was called Joseph. He was sold into slavery. 
by his own brothers. The Bible said the patriarch moved with envy, sold Joseph into slavery. Acts 7, verse 9. Now, but look at this. He was in that state as Psalm 105, 17 to 22 told us. He was slow, sold into slavery. He was bound with chains. He was put in prison. But verse 19 told us, until his word came. He didn't have any change of story. Until his word came. And the king sent for him. Maro teproniagazaga. Thank God the king of kings has sent for you today. You have come. Your own positive change of story will be established by his word. The king sent for him and lose him. Wherever you have been tied, I command you to be loose today. Some are tied in their father's house. Tied in one place. Tied in the prison of life. You are loose in the name of Jesus. The king sent for him and lose him. And the king lifted him and made him a prime minister in a strange land, which means they changed their constitution to accommodate an ex-convict to rule them, to accommodate a slave to rule them, to accommodate a foreigner to rule them. A slave yesterday became a ruler of Sultans. Say with me, next level. <laughs> a slave yesterday became a teacher of senators. Not me, small people. Teacher of senators. Why? His word came. Now, by the word that you'll be hearing today, I command your next level movement upwards. Yeah. Help of the Almighty will answer to you. He was made the Lord of Pharaoh's house. We can also see this in the life of Peter. Peter toiled all the nights in his business, fishing business, and caught nothing with his nets. And though so, they were washing their nets. Look to the 5 verse 2. They were washing their nets, which means case closed, stagnation, frustration. <laughs> in life, you are either making progress or you are stagnated or you are retrogressing. <laughs> you can't pass this three. Then you're making progress satisfactorily. Or you are stagnated by moving around the circle or you are retrogressing, moving backward. The last two will never be the portion of anyone under the sound of our voice. So here was Peter stagnated because he couldn't catch anything. But now Jesus came after using his boat to preach in a crusade. Launch your net into the deep for a drought. Save me, sent word. And that was what brought him to his next level. Even Peter argued with him, Jesus, I'm older than you. I, 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 I know, I see you're a young man. I'm married, you are not married, sir. I'm training children, you're not training children. <laughs> we don't catch this thing in the day. We catch it in the night according to the laws of fishery. Now, <laughs> it doesn't matter. That's why you must not play with sent word. Launch your net into the deep. And it said, nevertheless, thank God he had a change of mind. Nevertheless, at thy word. He lowered the net into the deep for a drought. All the fishes came to gather in his boats, in his nets. It was a boat sinking. People gathering breakthrough. Next level breakthrough. He has never had that kind of breakthrough before in his business. Someone is here today by the same word this morning. The kind of breakthrough you will hit, you have never had it before. It will be a people gathering breakthrough. Yeah. It will be an event making breakthrough. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Therefore, I pray for you. In your business, move to the next level. Yeah. In your career, move to the next level. Yeah. In your finances, move to the next level. Yeah. In your health, move to the next level. Yeah. In your relationship, move to the next level. Yeah. In your ministry, move to the next level. Yeah. 
in every area of your life, I command a next level shift in the name of Jesus. Someone, they will promote you. Just like the testimony you had today. Did you see somebody being promoted from handling two nations? They gave him 12. Another, the testimony that his, his income was doubled. His salary was doubled. There's nothing God cannot do. And I see God moving you forward in the name of Jesus Christ. Remember, we've been studying on this course, operating in the supernatural. I'm going to be looking at part four in this service. And we, this first service is part 4A. Operating in the supernatural. What is a sign? You may ask, what is a sign? A sign can be defined as an act that cannot be explained by natural laws, yet cannot be denied. A sign can be defined as an act, in this context, the act of God, that cannot be explained by natural laws, yet cannot be denied. How can you explain that the woman got pregnant without a man? It cannot be explained by natural laws, yet cannot be denied. How can you explain that Daniel entered into the lion's den and the lion said, we can't eat you? If you think it's normal, ask those people that brought him there. When they threw them there, the lion said, we can't eat this type. <laughs> Supernatural acts of God that cannot be denied, yet you can't explain them. A man was begging at the beautiful gate. There was nothing beautiful about his life. But Peter and John was going to, to pray at the hour of prayer. And they spoke to him. Peter said, Savior and God have I now. What I have, I give unto you. In the name of Jesus, which I have, rise up and walk. And the man jumped. He leaped. And later, the people came and shared the testimony by themselves. Not the apostles sharing the testimony. Acts 4, verse 16. And 17. Say, sure, a notable miracle has been done. We cannot deny it. They were talking to themselves. A notable miracle has been done. Yes, we can tell them to stop preaching in the name of Jesus. Eh? But we can't deny what they've done. We can't deny it. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 29, we saw by faith they passed through the Red Sea as a dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do so. We are drowned. They thought it was normal. When God said, move forward to their next level, to the promise, as they were moving, the Red Sea parted, hither and thither. It became a carpet for them to move on. <laughs> and they passed. The Egyptian thought it was normal. They also tried to pass, but the sea closed on them. It became their burial ground. I pray for you. Every pharaoh pursuing your life, they shall drown in the race of life. Yeah. No wonder Hebrews 11, 32 to 33 said, help us also understand. He said, what, then, what more? What shall I more say? For the time will fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah and of David also and Samuel and of the prophets. Who through faith, save me through faith. So the supernatural, we have seen that before. You, 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 you run the supernatural by faith. Who through faith subdued kingdom. Every kingdom is subduable. Every business sector is subduable. Every career is subduable by faith. Wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stop the mouth of lions. Through faith. Through faith, through faith. A sign is an act that cannot be explained by natural laws, yet cannot be denied. Can you explain Joshua speaking to the son? Son, stand still, and son stood still. He can't explain that by natural law. But the son stood still until they got victory. Number two. Signs are the strange acts of God that can cause men to wonder. 
the strange acts of God that can cause men to wonder. A wonder is anything that makes you to open your mouth and shout, wow. An amazement. Something that makes you to be surprised pleasantly. Something that makes you to be flabbergasted, overwhelmed, amazed. Isaiah 28 verse 21. For the Lord shall rise up as a man perazim to do his work, his strange work, to bring to pass his acts, his strange acts. Find out from David what God did in Mount Perazim, the mountain of breakthrough. But in one day, in verse 22, now therefore be ye not mockers, let your bounds be made strong. Don't mock the acts of God in the church. If your faith can't carry it, you better keep quiet. Don't talk. That man said, if, if God opened the windows of heaven, shall this same be, be he died? Don't mock it. Somebody say, see how God has given me a miracle child. He said, are you sure? It's not IVF. <laughs> see how God has healed me of cancer. Ah, it may be headache. Go. Please. Learn to put a guide on your mouth so that you don't suffer what you didn't plan for. Many people are in church suffering what they never planned for. They provoke it. They are the enemy of their lives by mocking what God is doing. <laughs> there are many like that. I've told you here before. One day, that was, you know, my, I, I, I was preaching like this. And I said, God will give you a miracle a lot. Somebody inside church, too. inside church, not outside. He's Neighbor shouted, Amen. You do that. Ah, why will you be shouting, Amen? Inside church. That's why sometimes I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. Inside church. You see, you have about if it's negative alert. Inside church. Thank God for the lady. Say, leave me. It's going to be positive alert. And the following Sunday, she got a testimony. She came to share it on the other. If not, we will not know what was going on inside church. Help me tell you, boy, don't be a mocker. Uh -huh. You better believe. Hallelujah. Amen. One day I was preaching in church and I, I was talking about restoration, that God can restore all things, that in the hand of God there's nothing lost. And it's true. Jewel 2.25. And God shall restore to you the years. How many years have you seen? And God can restore years. So go the one you lost, your grandfather, your great-grandfather, he can restore it. So I was talking about that one woman in the church believed God. She said, God, if what this pastor is saying is true, I need restoration. And how does she want restoration? He said, I need a miracle child. Why? She had a topic pregnancy four years before that time. Four years before that time, she had a topic pregnancy. And in evacuating her, they removed her tubes. And the doctor showed her. Madam, forget about having a child naturally. These are your tools. Except by miracle. She said, I believe in the miracle. And I was talking about her. I said, I believe God. Sir, nine months after, she stood on the altar to show us a handsome baby boy. God had given to her without tools. Without tools. Not, we wouldn't know. You know, it's your testimonies that make us know what is happening. We, would not, we wouldn't have known if she didn't come to the altar to share the testimony and show everybody what God has done. But you see, somebody can hear that and be doubting it. How can somebody have a child without two? It's not possible. But science are acts you cannot explain by natural laws, yet you can't deny it. From today, they wonder at you. Yes. Zechariah 3.8 made us to understand that, that we are to be wondered at. From now, you'll be a wonder. As a matter of fact, I've taught us here, that if you're a wind, you're a wonder. If you're born of the spirit, you're a wonder. They may, not, they may hear your movement, where you're going or where you're coming from, but they will not know where you're, what is happening. Many people will not be able to understand you from now. That's why I told, I've told you here before, and I repeat it. Very soon, they'll be asking you, how are you doing it? Because you're a wonder to them. 
Instead of them asking you, the same people that be asking you, where is your God? They will soon be asking you, how are you doing it? Because they can see results around you. You can see results. Zechariah 3. In Daniel 3, 17 to 28, we had this story of those Hebrew boys, those three Hebrew boys. And the king said they are going to throw them, they are going to throw them into the burning furnace. As a matter of fact, he raised it to power seven. He didn't know that seven is the number of God. And they pushed them in there. The fire did not do anything to them. But remember, before going there, they told the king, we are not, we are not, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. Do your worst, that's what it means. The God, we trust him. He will deliver us. And God delivered them. The man, Uncle Nebu, did not know that we are two or three are gathered in my name. There will be in the midst of them. He didn't know. He was the one with his reprobate mind. I came back to say, ah, did I not put three people there? Who is a fourth man there like the son of God? <laughs> I pray for someone here. Now, if you are under the sound of my voice and I hear this, I'm praying for you right now. In the midst of every challenge, God will appear to you as the fourth man. Yeah. From now, begin to enjoy the ministry of the fourth man. In that present challenge in your life right now, enjoy the ministry of the fourth man. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. What's supposed to have been fire turned to AC for them. And they were not burnt. If you think it's not, uh, it's, uh, somebody just organized it, ask the people that threw them inside. The fire burnt them. But the people that entered inside, they only removed the rope they used to tie them. Couldn't have any effect on them. How then do I operate in the supernatural? To operate in the supernatural, engage the power of bold declaration. Save me bold declaration. Uh, bold declaration. <laughs> to make bold declaration is, is boldness of faith. It's a demonstration of your faith. Is it okay? It's not, I'm not talking about people having serious, you know, having serious face like this. Mm, just please and not say something. That you may do that and see you have fear in your heart. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm talking about? It's the expression of your faith. Boldness is an open declaration of faith, your faith without doubting in your heart. Boldness is what? An open declaration of your faith without doubting in your heart. You will declare what you believe from your heart by faith without doubting in your heart. If you are doubting in your heart, it can't work. Do you know what is doubting? Doubting is having double-mindedness. Should I or should I not? Like somebody now, he's shaking. He say, mm, I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. He say, hey. I will not take drugs in the name of Jesus. I will not take drugs. But inside the heart, he's saying, ah, if it's 10 o'clock, if this sickness does not go, I will go and buy drugs. <laughs> that is doubt. You go and buy the drug. Forget it. You will. <laughs> Do you understand? Without doubting in your heart, Mark 11, 23, if thou can say to this mountain, to this sickness, to this oppression, to this spiritual husband, to this spiritual wife, to this lack, to this one, if thou can say to this challenge, be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, without doubting in your heart. That's the only thing that will spoil it. Without doubting in your heart. And you believe that those things you say will come to pass. You say, you will have whatsoever you say. Bold declaration. From now, I want you to make this a lifestyle that when issues confront you, because we are in war of words, what you say is actually the first aid treatment to every challenge. What I will say of the Lord, 
He's my refuge. He's my God in whom I trust. What do you say? He's spending me here. He's spending me there. What do you have? He says, he's spending me here. Pastor, he's not here. What are you saying? Oh, the whole town, this town, everywhere is hard. Is it what you're saying? Minus me. You know, <laughs> I went to pastor in Burkina Faso. And the pastor was taken over from, was two years my senior. And he, he, he called me aside after the handover. He said, did you do anything? I said, I didn't do anything. He said, why did they bring you here? <laughs> this is a strong land. <laughs> they are free people. They don't give. Pastor, it is well. <laughs> I just kept, I've already been advised in, by scriptures, so I didn't want to follow him. I said, when I was passing, I saw people building houses. People cannot build houses if they are hungry. Do you understand? You eat first before you build a house. Anywhere I go, I see new houses. I tell myself, that place is a good land. There's nothing you can convince me that this place is not a good land. It's your own choice. This place is a good land. And I will eat the good of this land. <laughs> so I just, told, I just told myself, there's no need to argue with him. So without preaching prosperity, the income of the church grew from $3,300 to $8,800 in one month. The same place the same people are not given. Before I know it, they were carrying me to a police station. Even the Mary of Ouagadougou today, we are still friends because they used to carry me to him every time. Arrest me that I'm causing nuisance. Why? The same place we saw two cars. There was no space to park cars again. No space to park cars everywhere. It's what you believe and it's what you say. Do you understand? What are you saying? Look at 1 Samuel 17. From 32 down to 50. Look at David. So the king was afraid of Goliath because Goliath had said that bring me a man that can challenge me. If the person kill me, then will be your servant. If I kill the person, you put all of them went to into hiding, including Saul, the king. David only came to give food to his brothers. And when David had it, he was angry. He said, Who is this uncircumcised policeman that is molesting the army of God of Israel? He said, I will go and confront him. And they told Saul, there's a small boy that wants to confront this man. He said, he wants to fight him. <laughs> Saul called him, come, my son, let me advise you. <laughs> you, you're a youth. This man has been a fighter from his uh, youth. You can't go. He has military training. You don't have military. You can't go. David said, okay. That's why you share your testimonies. Learn to rehearse your testimonies. Because it's a strong weapon. You know, testimonies have the same potency as the blood of Jesus. They overcame him by the blood and by the word of their testimony. He has the same potency like the blood of Jesus. Revelation 12, 11. So, David said to him, look, that is all. <laughs> eh? I was keeping my father's sheep. A lion and a bear came and took one of them. I ran after them. I slaughtered them. The same God. Do you see both speaking? The same God. That delivered me from the hand of the lion and the bear. He too will deliver me from the hand of this circumcised Philistine. So I say, if he's so, come and carry the ammo and go and fight him. <laughs> David said to him, I believe he was saying in his heart, if the ammo could save, why didn't you use it? He said, I've not proved this, thing. leave it. I will use what I proved. I'm using my catapult in the bush. I know how I used to keep us with it. I will use it. I proved that one. And he went and picked five stones. J-E-S-U-S. -S, the name of Jesus. And went and ran after Goliath. Goliath said, hey, small boy. <laughs> I, am I a dog that you're coming after me? A me, Goliath, with catapult. I will kill you and finish you today. I give your body to the boss of the earth. David said, you don't know what you're talking about. David did not have any sword in his hand, though. Look at the power of saying. That's so that you understand the power of words. David killed Goliath before he came there with his words. He said, today, 
I will, I will kill you. I will cut off your head and I will give your body to the birds of the air. There was no sword in his hand. That was when he killed him. His words. Some of you allow people to kill you by their words. Somebody says, over their dead body, you will not give birth. And you're not crying, Pastor, can you see what it did be? That man is a notorious wizard. Oh, I know how many people have met Barry. Instead of you replying back with your own words, like David did. You are you not carry what the man. Don't allow the devil to have the final say. Don't allow your enemies to have the final say. Anything they say, counter say it. Do you understand? Yes. One day, you know, Kenneth, in um, Kogi said of Nigeria, I was privileged to pass. As a young pastor that I went to mount our signboard. Some Muslim people came out. I said, over their dead body, the signboard will not be mounted there. They brought cutlasses and gone. That anybody that they will kill the person. I kept quiet. I said, you can fight man and win. And it's true. You can fight angels and win. You can fight the devil. Nobody can fight God and win. If you want to fight God, come and touch the signboard. All of them drew back. The signboard stayed there. <laughs> Do you understand? What you say, you have the God has a final say. Who has the final say? Jehovah has the final So you to join God to have the final say. Don't allow the devil to have what? The final say. David said, you have come against me in the name of your God. I come against you in the name of God of Israel, whose armies you are defied. Today I will cut off your head. And did he cut off his head? David ran after him. The only one shot from the sling. He didn't miss targets. Don't you think it's God that guided you to that place? Is that how they keep people with even you now? Somebody hit you with a die, will you die? <laughs> <laughs> but the word has already gone to do the work. And that was how he actually used Goliath's sword to cut his head, as he has said. He didn't have any sword. May God give us understanding. Amen. Bold declaration. Bold declaration. Please note that we are empowered for boldness by the Holy Ghost. We are empowered for boldness by what? The Holy Ghost. That's the truth. Peter that denied Jesus in Matthew 26, 69 to 75, that denied Jesus three times before a small girl and before people. The same Peter, when the Holy Ghost came in Acts chapter 2, verse 4, began to speak in verse 41, 39 to 41. He began to speak, and 3,000 people got saved. 3,000 people got saved one day. So we are empowered by the Holy Ghost for boldness. Ask him. The apostle prayed. Stretch forth your hand to heal in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. I grant all boldness that we may speak thy word. And that signs and wonders may be done in the name of your Holy Son, Jesus. And when they prayed, the whole place was shaken. And they ministered the word of God with great grace and with great power. Acts 4, 29 to 33. Note also number three. We command the supernatural openly by speaking boldly. We command the supernatural openly by speaking boldly. Please learn to be a bold speaker. Declare the word of God with boldness. Boldness is a thing of the heart. It's not a thing of the face. Some people look serious in the face, but they're chicken hearted. Any small thing, they start crying. We command the supernatural openly by speaking boldly. Psalm 81, 10 to 14, remember. <laughs> He said, I am the Lord thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. But my people would not hearken to my voice. But Israel would none of me. But I gave them up unto their own hard loss. And they walked in their own counsels. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. And Israel walked in my ways. I should soon have subdued their enemies. And turned my hand against their adversaries. When you speak boldly, God turns away your adversaries. God deals with them. God works with bold believers, not chicken-hearted believers. Lily-hearted believers, no. The three Hebrew boys say, we are not careful to answer you in this matter. <laughs> Our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us. In other words, do your worst and 
Did God deliver them or not? He delivered them. Acts 14, 3. Long time about day. Speaking boldly in the Lord. And God granted that testimony, signs and wonders be done in his name. And by their hands. Bold speaking. Long time about day. Speaking boldly in the Lord. Could give testimony to the world. Of his grace. When you speak boldly, God confirms it. Now listen to me. This is a problem we have. I also had a problem. God solved it for me. Let me tell you how he solved it. Many a time you want to say something, not that you are convinced to say it, but you'll be, the voice will be telling you, how about if you say it, it didn't come to pass? How about, okay, the other way too, how about if you say it and it comes to pass? Did you get something? Has it ever happened to you? There's nobody at home who's not afraid like that. See, if I say this thing now, uh, ah, they will laugh at me. Oh. I used to do like that. Sometimes you would tell me something to say in service like this. I'll be afraid. If I say this one, it didn't happen. What will happen? And when I go back, the Holy Ghost will be flogging me. <laughs> As I am suffered enough punishment. So anything he tells me now, I say it. I don't look at your face, so I say it. You know why? He told me that, do your work. Let me do my own. Your own is to say it. My own is to confirm it. He confirmed the word of his servant and performed the counsel of his messenger. Isaiah 40, 20, uh, 44 verse 26. That's how God delivered me. So now, anything he tells me to say, I don't look back. I don't look back. One day in Kaduna, Sabo in Kaduna, we were doing service. I, I wasn't even the one that preached. Oh. I wasn't the one that preached. They just come to bless communion. And he told me he's restoring somebody's manhood. I, this kind of thing, then you go talk for church. <laughs> but I told them, oh, God, I say something to me now. But I, I, I'm not afraid to say it. I say, God said he's restoring somebody's manhood now. I said, take this communion. God will restore your manhood. <laughs> we took communion. We went home. We went home. On Sunday, a woman came to share testimony. That after the communion, God restored the man's manhood, the, the husband's manhood. I believed it too. If it's a man, I would doubt it. But if it's a woman, I must have proved it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. So there are certain things he will tell you. It will look strange. Do you understand? But if he's the one that said it, he will confirm it. Who is he that said it and he come to pass? Except the Lord has commanded it. So don't be afraid. Especially anything you can see in the scripture. That is God's way. Speak it. Do you understand? At least start from those ones. I cannot be poor. I am healed. I am the head and not the tail. Yes? I cannot lack my mate. Anything you can see in the scripture here. Do you understand? Speak them with boldness. Say me I hear. When you speak boldly, God confirms it with signs and wonders following. Glory to God. Anyway, today is our next level banquet. Please note that by redemption, we have been empowered for a life of continuous progress. A continuous what? Did you understand that? that? We are then for what? A life of continuous progress. So not progress today, backwardness tomorrow. No, continuous progress. That means progress in succession. Many people, the testimony they share since 19 Elijah, that's what they're still celebrating today. I know when I used to. No. Progress. Proverbs 4, 18. The path of the just. Are you justified by the blood of Jesus? Are you born again, child of God? If you are not, you become born again today. The path of the just, like a shining light that shineth more and more, even unto what? A perfect day. Shine more and more. Unlimited progress is the portion of every born again child of God. But for you to realize this, you need to have what we call next level mentality. Next level what? Yes. Next level mentality. You must carry it. Don't be like those, those ten spies. They went to the land. They saw the land was flowing with milk and honey. They saw giants there. They were afraid of the giants. Can you be eating milk and honey and not be a giant? That is a confirmation. That the land, but they say we are like grasshoppers before them. People have that grasshopper mentality. Grasshopper mentality. 
telling us here. And some people now, they, they can't think of owning their own business. They can't think of starting their own, starting something, or looking for a better position. All they want is, uh, if I can give me cleaning work, hmm? uh, or messenger. That's all you May God deliver us in Jesus' name. The people that are owning the company, are they not, do they have two heads? Your brain cell is the same like their own. So aspire higher. That's what we are talking about. Thank God for where you are now. There is a place called there. Are you following me now? You are here now, but there is a place called there. And you move there. And you know God is a God of here or there. <laughs> Amen. I asked Elijah now. He told Elijah, when the brook cherries, the brook has dried. If you, if you stay in the brook, dried brook, you dry with the brook. But what did he do to Elijah? He said, go there to the woman of Zarephath. I have kept the woman there to sustain you. So God is a God of here or there. Satan is a Satan of here and there. <laughs> He's moving about here to and fro. Have a next level mentality. Please, everyone here, that's why you must read. Read, read to sharpen your mentality. Study to sharpen your mentality. Anything you are doing, be excellent in it. Kings cannot come to your rising if you are not excellent in what you are doing. Kings will not come to your rising. They will come to the brightness of your rising. Did you understand scripture? I said, I see, see, Pastor. Kings will come to the brightness of your rising. Not just your rising. You must be excellent. And you must, if to be excellent is to stand out in whatever you are doing. You are cooking food, be excellent in it. Everyone will come and buy there, including the president. You are a teacher, be excellent in it. Next level mentality. In this kingdom, it is to you as far as your eyes can see. It is revelation you use to change levels. So you use revelation to change levels. Paul said, I went up by revelation, Galatians 2.2. 2. He never saw Jesus with his eyes, but he became the chief of the apostles by revelation. What you know now is what has kept you where you are. If you know more, you do better. So by revelation, you go up. You change levels. And in this kingdom, Genesis 13, 14 to 15, it is to you as far as your eyes can see. Say, start from where you are. Look at the east to the west to the north to the south. As far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. Nobody is limiting you. It is what you have known that is limiting you. Next level mentality. If you know better in that business, you do better. If you know better in that career, you move forward. If you see them promoting somebody, don't get angry. There's something the person knows that you don't know if all things remain equal. Proverbs 23 verse 7. It says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You can't be different from your thoughts. Which means what you thought yesterday brought you to where you are now. What you are thinking today will bring you to where you'll be tomorrow. Change your thought pattern and you will change the things happening around you. Somebody think, hey, I, I think I'm cursed. I think the, the, the villagers are chasing me. That's how you've been all these years. Why can't you change it? I am blessed. I am prosperous. <laughs> I can lend to nations. <laughs> and I will not borrow. Are you getting what I'm talking about? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So quickly as I close, the keys to experiencing continuous change of level. Keys to con experiencing continuous change of level. Number one, we must begin to see instructions of scriptures as an examination. Which one must pass to make it to the next class in school? You must begin to see every instruction of scripture as an examination. Which one must pass to make it to the next class? Even if your father is a principal, they will not promote you until you pass that exam of grade 3 to grade 4. <laughs> you won't, nobody promotes you. Even if you claim you are sick, when you will get well, you come and write the exam. True or false? So anytime you receive instruction from scripture, see it as an exam. You need to pass to get to the next level. This kingdom is tied with instructions. And I pray, as I relate with people, as I see people, I see that people don't pay attention to instructions. You give them instructions, they do another thing. 
and they'll come and talk rubbish. No. Instructions that are your life. Proverbs 4, verse 13. Lay hold, take hold of instruction. Let it not depart. Keep her, for she is your life. The instructions you obeyed yesterday brought you to where you are today. The instructions you obey today will take you to where you'll be tomorrow. If you like, be arguing. They say, Peter, give up. You'll be arguing. you stay there. If you don't, do any instruction you don't obey, you can't get the next benefit that will take you today. And even if you obey, if you pass exam grade three, when you reach grade four, you say, write the exam. The same instruction. They give you paper. Don't write this exam with biro. Write it with HB pencil. You say, all of you are foolish people. I have the anointing of writing biro. And you now use Bible to write it. When will you pass? But that's what you are doing. God will give you instruction. If you hearken to the voice of the Lord your God, I will and observe to do his commandment as I command you, the Lord will set you on high above all the nations. They say, obey what? <laughs> I want to be here where I am. That's what you are doing when you disobey instructions. May God give us understanding. Amen. Number two, when engaging, when engaging with instructions of scriptures becomes one's lifestyle, when engaging, the instruction of scripture becomes one's lifestyle, God begins to lift you above others. When engaging, the instructions of scripture becomes one's lifestyle, you are sure to experience continuous change of level in this work of God. Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 3, like I quoted earlier. Number three, you must continue to serve God and the interests of his kingdom as a lifestyle. Job 36, 11. If they obey and serve him, they spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasures. Did you see the testimony of Mama today? Every day, you see this woman coming to clean church. Today, at 85, she's still strong. Some people are 70 years. They're using walking stick. They're guiding them. Some are even 30. They can't climb story building. May God give us understanding. <laughs> Continue to trust in the Lord, number four, to confirm his word in your life. Continue to trust in the Lord, to confirm his word in your life. Luke 145. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things spoken to her from the Lord. Number five, we must continue to celebrate the faithfulness of God What may be happening around us notwithstanding. Continue to celebrate the faithfulness of God. What may be happening around us notwithstanding. And to do this, you must be joyful always. You must be joyful. You must be joyful. Habakkuk chapter 3, 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines. The labor of the olive shall fail, and the fish shall eat no meat. The flocks shall be cut off from the food, and there shall be no head in the store. Yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will join the God of my salvation. For he will make my feet like a hand's face and he will make me to walk in my high places. That's next level. If you want to walk in your high places, you must be joyful, celebrating the faithfulness of God. He has done all things well. The Bible says, in everything, give thanks to God. For that is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And after you have done the will of God, the Bible told us, you need patience that you may obtain what? The promise. Hebrews 10, 36. Be joyful. Rejoice. And again, I say what? Rejoice. God is too faithful to fail. God cannot mismanage your destiny. He's too faithful. Rise on your feet. You are going somewhere. Your desired change of level is now. Doors are opening to you that will take you to your higher places. Good doors shall not be denied you anymore. Now, I want to pray for some people here before we pray and close in this service. And um, you are here. You, you know that you need the help of God. You know that without him, you can do nothing and you cannot experience a change of level. And you want to say, Jesus, help me today. Save me. Write my name in the book of life. You want to be a child of God. You want to be born again. You want to receive the help from above so that you can experience a change of level. If you are that person, put your hand on your chest right now, pray this prayer of salvation with me. Maybe you are struggling with certain evil habits, you know that only Jesus can help you. Also pray that prayer 
and all you gave your life to Jesus, you know you are no more there. Also, pray this prayer of rededication. Please pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, I confess you with my mouth and from my heart as my Lord and my Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you for saving me. Wash me clean with your precious blood. Thank you for taking me to a new level. In Jesus' glorious name. Please, if you pray that prayer with me, wave that hand to Jesus. Just raise that hand to Jesus if you pray that.